Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do a tutorial on how to apply for the Siemens Bursi. So let's get into it. Firstly, let's navigate to a browser of our choice and mine is Google Chrome. Then secondly, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our URL and we're going to search jobs.siemens.com forward slash careers. So let's just quickly refresh this particular page to make sure it is active and the website is not laggy. And as you can see in this particular search bar, before I press bursary or it has been searched already, there should be a process for job title, keyword and company. So you're going to press bursary and then you're going to wait a little bit. You're going to click on bursary and then the website will kind of uh, pop up the advert. So before we uh, press apply now, we can just kind of go over the contents of the advert to make sure we are eligible for the bursary and we know exactly which particular documents we need to upload and have at our disposal. So firstly, this particular bursary is for South Africans. As you can see, the location is South Africa. So everybody is within the, within the borders of South Africa. So if you are South African and you are within one of the fields of study that the bursary is tending to fund, then you can deem yourself very lucky. So, if you don't know Siemens, Siemens has been around the block for many years. So they are a global powerhouse. They were they were the ones that designed machinery. They used to do cell phones. They were the one uh, company that they did used to sponsor Real Madrid back in the day. So Siemens has been around the block, and their particular organization has great market share in the field of engineering and technology. Okay. If we move it further to this particular section, we are familiar or familiarized with the fields of study that the university tends to fund. As you can see, it is BSc or Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering, Heavy and Light Current, BSc or Bachelor of Engineering in Electronics or Engineering, Bachelor of Engineering uh, Semicolon Technology, Bachelor of Engineering in Electri Electri Electrical and Electronic Engineering, which is Megatronics, Mechatronics, and then BSc Information uh, Technology or forward slash Computer Science and Computer Engineering. Okay, so you if you go further further up, you'll see it says Matric and University um, in brackets. So if you are in Matric, this would be the requirements you would need to have in order to apply as a matriculant going to university for the first time. But if you are in university as a first year or second year, these would be the actual requirements you would have um, to apply them for the next academic year. Okay? Then it says here, students who meet the above minimum eligibility requirements may apply by submitting the clear copies of the following supporting documentation, which is motivation letter, Curriculum, Vieta of the CV, ID, Matric Certificate, or Grade 11 results and Grade 12 result, and then full academic record if you are in Matric. Okay, so let's go further up then to apply now. So let's go into apply now. And while it's loading, you will obviously uh, come across this particular page where it says sign in. But because I've signed in already, I have my login details already. But if you want to know how to sign up, you click on sign up. And then you'll put in your email address, you'll put in your password, and then you make a choice between the two. Make my data accessible to all relevant Siemens Group companies worldwide to consider me for open positions that may fit my profile. Or make my data only accessible to the Siemens AEG and the Siemens Group company offering the relevant job position to consider me only for the job I applied for. So if you want to kind of extend your, extend your, your reach within the Siemens Group, I would then um, make my first choice or click the first particular option that I have on top. But because I've applied already, so I'll go to sign in and then I'm quickly gonna put in my university email address. So, okay, then I'll obviously press sign in. So thus far, as you can see, the process has been straightforward. There's no frills, there's no hidden catches and so forth. And then you wouldn't obviously be confronted with this particular portion. And once you press sign in, the application process automatically opens up. And now you just need to complete your application, upload it to certain documentation, and it should be done. Okay. As you can see, we they are for CV, and we'll obviously just upload a CV if you have one. If you don't have one, Google has many templates. You can just copy one and then put your own information on there. And then you can just upload. Always save the CV in PDF 
easier for me, so it's easier for the recruiters or the the administrators on the back end to have a copy of it. It looks in the same format as you've uploaded, and not a Word document where the formats of each different computer or Word versions may kind of cause your CV to look a little bit untidy and unneat. Okay. The email address that you will, that you've signed up with, will be automatically displayed in this particular section. So I'm using my university email address, uh, my name, another example, another example, okay, last name, okay, phone number, oh seven nine four three one five, okay, there we go. Location it will be Cape Town. I'm in Cape Town, Western Cape. Okay, then when you look at the red asterisk, then you know these are required fields. You can't go or you can't proceed without completing any particular banner or cell that has a red asterisk. A cover letter, as you can see, it doesn't have a red asterisk, so it's not really important. But I always advise applicants to upload a cover letter to make sure your application is strengthened by additional documents. So a cover letter is good if you want to kind of uh, provide context to why you're applying, the purpose for the diversity and why you want to, what you want to achieve after getting the education or your qualification, which particular projects you want to embark on when you're done with your study. So it's always good to kind of have a cover letter to substantiate your application. Additional documents, the same thing. If you have uh, external uh, qualifications or certificates or affiliations or social groups or projects that you've been involved in, it's always good to add these particular documents under the documents section. Then title, you would obviously, I'm a male, so I'm going to say Mr. I'm not married yet. Gender, I'm a male, I'm going to say there. And citizenship, I'm going to say South Africa, so I'll move all the way down. South Africa, the same with uh, region or country of residence, it will be South Africa. Okay, my province will be Western Cape. The city would be... Cape Town, postal code will be 8001, I'll go further down, have you ever worked for Siemens before, that will be no, I haven't worked there, are you legally eligible to work in the country or region in which this job is located, so in this particular platform it says job, but just be mindful that you're actually applying for the bursary, and if you look at the advert earlier on, it says for Africa, so you will, if you ask African, you will say yes, Notice period of date of, of availability, you're going to say immediately. Gross minimum salary um, or annual salary, you're going to say just say 10,000 because you don't have any job or, um, or just say 100, it's already 10. Then country or region of highest education achieved, we are going to get South Africa. Okay, then it says University of Highest Education Achieved. So if you are on matric, just select the university that you are intending to go to, to make it easier for you. But if you are already in university, you already have then your um, university that you can select from. So I was at UWC, so I'll say uh, Western Cape University. The next question is, do you consider yourself to have a disability? I don't have a disability. And then you, do you have any relatives working at Siemens? If you have somebody, it would be yes. If you don't, it would be no. Then moving forward, are you an African citizen? Yes, you are. Um, is the academic average above 65? Yes, it is. Then this is where you have to kind of give more context to the next questions. Have you received a bursary from any other company? If so, please stipulate. If you have received another bursary and you intend to decline that bursary, if you get this one, say that. Um, if you don't have any other prospects in terms of bursary, just say not applicable, or no, you don't have anything. Have you applied for NASPERS? This wording is slightly wrong. It should, there shouldn't be an A funding for this particular financial year. And have you been approved or rejected? If rejected, provide reason. Have you applied for NASPERS? Yes. I have applied, but I I am uncertain about whether I will 
become or I will um, yeah I will be selected for funding okay simple then which field of study are you looking to be funded for so you'll obviously go back to the advert and if you have if you are studying any of those fields that was listed you will send put in there BSc computer science then are you looking to be funded for an engineering field of study you'll say yes if it is engineering then what is your graduation date um, first if you're in matric you're gonna say first time applying for university no graduation date yet if you are in university and you kind of have an idea in terms of which year you're going to graduate you'll just kind of put the, the graduation year in and maybe just you can speculate or estimate the month that you will graduate in then grade 12 applicants have you achieved a level 5 it should be yes in english have you achieved a level 5 in math it should be yes um, have you achieved a level 5 in physical science it should be yes and then Early on, when I, I'm not sure if you saw on the advert, it says um, the ages of 17 to 25. So are you between the age of 17 to 25? It should be yes. And lastly, it's just a disclaimer where they kind of want you to confirm that the information you've shared on the, on the system or application platform is accurate, it's true, and it's not fraudulent, or you're withholding some information to kind of gain a, a, a preference or advantage to get this bursary. And if they do identify you have put incorrect information on the system or you are, you are being fraudulent in terms of what you were submitting, they can withdraw you from the application process. But if everything is accurate, it's good to go. You press yes, I agree. And then you can just press submit. Okay. So from there onwards, the application should be simple. You'll obviously get a either an application number or a I email stipulating that you've applied for the Siemens bursary. Feedback will be obviously given to you hopefully by Jan, February. But that's it for today's video. If you found this video insightful and informative, please share this video with those who are looking for a bursary or needing funding. And please like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. Cheers. Thank you very much.